Well, Chapel Street in the 70s, if you like, was the hub of Salford because there was the town hall, the education offices were there, the hospital was there, Rex Bingo was there, because that used to be the cinema, but of course when I started with the salon, it, it was Rex Bingo then. Um, and the pubs were drinking pubs. They were, they were, there was no entertainment went on or um, no meals and things like that that you get now in pubs. It was all just drinking. There were cars going up and down, but not as many as it is today. Um, lots more people walking along the pavement. They used to walk. Rather than catch a bus, they'd walk. Because there wasn't double yellow lines and the, the people could nip in and out of shops. And people were so friendly. They'd even nip in for a natter rather than buy anything or have their hair done. Just passing around, thought I'd pop in and say hello. You want a drink? Yes, please. You know, and that was the way it was. They were such a friendly crowd. They all, all the businesses and the people in the area came in and said hello. And we do this, we do that. If you want any help, let us know. And they welcomed me to the street, which is really nice. And it, it became like a big family. They were so friendly and helpful. When we first went into the shop, it was very, very old fashioned. It really was. Everything was so dated. It was a huge, big salon. I think at one time it might have been two rooms, but they knocked it into one, so it was very big and long. And behind that was what we used to use as the staff room, and behind that a kitchen. So it was great. And a friend of mine made me a, a reception desk for the front, because there hadn't been a reception desk. And we got an old till, one of these drawer things that you pull out and shove in a wooden one. Um, and the clients that came in had never been offered a drink. So we used to make drinks in the kitchen and it was as if it was in a different era and we were bringing it into the era we were in because I was young and the people that had had it before were probably in the 50s, 60s. So it was a big culture shock for everybody, the stuff that we did. The ladies that were coming in that used to go there before I bought it they all had a khaki look to the colour. It, a brown had a greeny tinge to it. It wasn't a natural colour. So when I renewed everything and they started coming in and I'm saying, well, why don't we have a little bit of a tint of red in that or a bit warmer colour? It wasn't long before they realised how much better the hair was, really. And they loved it. There was quite a few pubs on the street. In fact, we were next door but one to a pub. Um, there was Chinese shops, there was bike shops, shops that necessitated um, what you would need to buy to keep your days going. There was green grocery shops and things like that. So car sales rooms, there was the Rex Bingo Hall opposite. So they'd come out after having bingo, they'd come and have the hair done as well, you know. Um, and I used to have um, people coming in from Granada, not the stars. The women from the cafeteria would come in and they'd tell somebody else and the women from costume would come in or makeup or... And you used to hear all the stories as well, which was great, you know, that you shouldn't really hear, you know, about all the stars and what they were up to. And so it, uh, it was a real gossip shop, really. And there was so much to watch if you have, you know, if you had time to look through the window. Um, you'd see all sorts of characters. I'd see business people, solicitors rushing from one place to another. Um, there'd be people from the town hall to and going to and from the town hall because it wasn't far away. And the, every walk of life used to go past the shop because there was everything in the area. The shop shut at half past five. But even the nights that I was open till eight o'clock, there were still people knocking about, not many, but there were still people knocking about. But you used to start work a lot earlier. You'd have people getting up at five o'clock to go to work. You know, so it did quieten down a lot. There was no cars after half past five, very few. It was a lot quieter. And I think that's probably why we, when it was dark, we were a bit scared because there was nobody about. Once it started going dark, you had to lock your door. 
because there were some characters. And it can be a bit frightening, especially women on their own. So we did, even those days, have to lock the door after dark because all the other shops had gone. All the other shops had shut up for the night. Half past five, six o'clock, they shut. And we were the only one with lights on in the street. I just settled in very quickly. And it just shows you the clientele that we had because I had to have quite a serious operation. And I'd looked to getting somebody I knew to come in and do the work for me to keep it going. And she wanted to charge me more than I was taking in a week to do the work for me. And my mum, I'd got the apprentice and I'd got my mum coming in helping shampoo and things like that. And I'd taught my mother a bit like an apprentice. And my dad, when he wasn't working, had come in and do the till and things like that when we were busy on Saturdays and things. And all the ladies that used to come in and have the hair done said, don't bother about getting anybody in. Your mother can roll me up, she's done it before. I'll call myself out, we'll manage. And they managed. They still came back every single week and my mum did the shampoo in and set them up and then they brushed themselves out and did it for three weeks while I couldn't go in and do it and still paid full price. So that shows you the type of people they were and how loyal they were. Learned an awful lot from the people around me. I also made a lot of friends and I still do some of those people's hair today, even after all these years. Heritage Footsteps, preserving our heritage with new media.